I'm stressing this because it's important to understand one simple point. There is no moral symmetry. There is no moral equivalence between Israel and the terrorist organizations in Gaza. The terrorists are committing a double war crime. They fire at Israeli civilians and they hide behind Palestinian civilians. And by contrast, Israel takes every measure to avoid civilian casualties. Since 1991, the Unity Coalition for Israel, UCI, has educated and motivated millions of people around the world. UCI is an alliance of Christian and Jewish organizations and individuals working together to ensure the sovereignty, safety, and security of Israel, America's only reliable ally in the Middle East. Hello, I'm Esther Levins, the CEO and founder of the Unity Coalition for Israel. In 1991, UCI, then known as Voices United for Israel, produced the following video featuring the voice of Israel, radio journalist Frida Keat, in an interview with Benjamin Netanyahu. He then was the Deputy Foreign Minister of Israel. Twenty years later, we know him as the Prime Minister of Israel, who is serving his second term. The desert storm had passed, but it did not end the stormy cycle of events in the Middle East. While many Americans view the Middle East struggle as a mysterious tangle of ancient feuds and fighting, most realize the state of Israel came into being because much of the world believed the Jewish people needed a homeland, their own original homeland. They needed a homeland as a hedge against another attempt to annihilate them. Who can forget the systematic genocide of the Nazis? One third of the world's Jewish population was killed. And except for a few friends of the Jews who tried to hide them, no nation acted to save them. Five wars, none of Israel's choosing, have been launched by the Arabs with the expressed purpose of destroying the tiny nation. In the four decades since its founding, Israeli men and women have been called to fight and die in these wars, to defend their homeland. Shalom. This is Frida Keat speaking to you from Jerusalem. On behalf of Voices United for Israel, it is my very special privilege and pleasure to introduce to you someone who, as the expression goes, really needs no introduction at all. The Deputy Foreign Minister of Israel, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu. We in Israel and in the Jewish world in general suffer great distress at what seems to us to be highly distorted reporting, usually negative, about Israel in the world media. Uh, it seems to disregard entirely the very great dangers and difficulties that Israel faces. Well, Israel didn't have to seek out this kind of support uh, during the first 19 years of its life because uh, the campaign was quite clear. The Arabs were uh, bent on annihilating us uh, and everyone in his right mind supported us and not them. Uh, what has happened since the 1967 war, since the Six-Day War, is that the Arabs have uh, disguised what they seek to do, and they said, well, we don't want to destroy Israel. What we want is simply to uh, get back the territories that they actually lost in the war of aggression, trying to annihilate us. That's false. That's not what they want. Uh, but they have built up a case that has reversed causality. They have said that these territories are the cause of the conflict and not its result. Territory does count. It counts more than ever in the Age of Missiles. Because when these missiles hit Israel, it can obstruct the time that we need to mobilize our three-quarters of the army, which is a reservist. It could take us a week instead of two to three days. Imagine starting that war and starting that mobilization on the, uh, on the suburbs of Tel Aviv or on the banks of the Jordan. It makes a hell of a difference. In fact, it makes all the difference. So I think these three great lies, that the PLO wants peace, that the core of the problem is the Palestinian problem, uh, and that territory doesn't count. These are the three untruths that have to be corrected. And they cannot be corrected by individual spokesmen alone. They must be taken up by an army of soldiers for truth. And I hope that the people who are listening to this will become soldiers in the most crucial battle of all, the battle for truth. I want the Prime Minister to fully understand that we're all joining with him in this battle for truth. And from this day on, you can depend on us to combat whatever 
negative media and untruths are out there. We're an army for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tiny Israel has faced a Goliath of international opposition since the day she was reconstituted in 1948. She has fought and won five defensive wars started by combined Arab armies. Israel today stands in the forefront of the war being waged around the world by radical Islam. For 22 years, the Unity Coalition for Israel has been engaged in the battle for truth. By researching Israel's historical rights to the land and by publicizing those claims to the Congress and to the media, both Christians and Jews have joined forces across the country to send a loud and clear message to protect this small nation and her brave and valiant people. I'm very excited about this event, and I'm going to read you a, a couple of things about Esther. Uh, a lot of you know that Esther was one of the pioneers in the Zionist movement, and um, her husband was very, very active in the nation of Israel, uh, Israel in its formation, and she's been extremely active in bringing Christians and Jews together with her coalition and keeping the um, the world really informed as to all of the things that are happening in the Middle East. <laughs> yes, my name is Joseph Farah, and I agree with every single thing that has been said <laughs> in this meeting today. Who are you people? You're, you're just great. Well, this is Eric Stackelbeck from CBN News, host of CBN Stackelbeck on Terror Show. I'm at the Capitol here. I want to give a big hello to the Unity Coalition for Israel, especially my good friend Esther Levins, who's doing invaluable work for the state of Israel and for the U.S.-Israel relationship. And this is our task, to proclaim, because that is the function of those who believe in the God of Sinai. As it is written on the Liberty Bell inscribed irrevocably and indelibly on that national symbol, you shall proclaim liberty throughout the land. Those who engage in the media hold the public trust and the special mandate that they are in the business of proclaiming. And so what better way than to grant this special recognition and award to Dr. Wright and to the NRB, but even more so, there is one lady who informs us every day of the reality of the world and exhorts us to defend those things that are dear to us. And therefore, again, I invoke the name of our dear Esther Levins. Thank you for your kind listening. God bless. I met Esther years ago, and she and I uh, just bonded. I had the privilege of assisting her in doing an event for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. When he was coming here, we were in Washington, D.C., and he was coming to meet with President Clinton. And at that event, he laid aside all of his notes. He leaned this way on the podium and talked. He leaned that way. And afterwards, people came up and told me that they had never seen him more relaxed or more at home than at that event. And this was Esther's heart. And so we brought uh, Christians and Jewish people together to uh, lend our support for Israel. Remember in the Holocaust, Remember the Warsaw Ghetto? Remember what happened in that ghetto? There were some that moved in and carried on their orthodox ceremonies and never dreamed that the world would allow anything to happen to them, that surely they would be liberated from the ghetto. There were others that just lost all hope, and losing all hope, they lost their senses. But there were others that fought. There were others that said, we will not go down without a fight. They smuggled people out. They smuggled guns in. They uh, smuggled food in. They had a plan, a strategy to stand against the enemy. And I believe that it is our time to stand, and having done all, to stand. Prime Minister Netanyahu throughout the years has enunciated in a compelling way the need for us to engage in this still timely war and to win the battle for truth. And in this, in this contest between freedom and tyranny, Israel stands at the forefront, however maligned, uh, however distorted. This is the real meaning of Israel's adventure. And that's why I hope that the champions of freedom and the champions of truth will stand by her at this crucial time. 
Help us, UCI, to help Israel prevail in the battle for truth and to ultimately preserve religious freedoms, Western culture, and the world civilization as we know it. That really brings me to the final question, Mr. Netanyahu. How would you like the outside world to understand Israel and to look at Israel? Truthfully, just truthfully.